Okay, so there's a lot of things that don't matter uh, about how we got to this point, but what we did so was we defined a, a zero a, on a robot, a base, work plane, and power mill. Uh, we machined half of our car. Whether it's this big or a uh, limousine, it doesn't matter. Um, once we're done, we attached our spheres just using hot glue. We attached the spheres. They could be on the car itself. They could be on the fixturing. They could be anywhere you want. I just put them here just because I did. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the robot in the probing directory, there's a routine under leapfrog called get sphere locations. I'm going to select that. And this is it's specific how to run it. We've documented it. I'm going to drive the robot down manually. And I'm going to hover over each sphere. You don't need to be perfect, but you want to get it near the middle of the sphere. Which order are you doing the spheres? I'm going to do number one, number two, and number three. The order doesn't matter, but you need to replicate that order when you do the next step. So I'm going to do one is the passenger fender, two is the driver door, number three. So I hover over it, I'm in T1 mode, and I just cycle start it. And it comes up and says, which sphere are you trying to probe? And I say number one, and the robot's going to step through the routine and probe the sphere. Now, a couple things that are very important. It does not matter where the spheres are as long as they don't change their relative position to the finished part. It's like rule number one. Number two, while I'm gonna do this demo, all my parts are on, all my spheres are in the same plane. They don't have to be. You could have one on the hood, you could have one on the fender, you could have one on the back. The only thing is when you shift the part, you need to be able to reach the spheres with the robot again. So that's a big thing. Um, and of course, they can't change position. Like if they break off or something, you kind of, you know, you kind of have a problem at that point. Um, and we're just going to run through this process. So it did all three spheres. Also, if I wanted to pick it up with my tool pointing like this or like this, just for reach purposes, none of that matters. Just don't move the spheres. So now the robot's done. My little black icon comes up because he's finished. And I'm going to drive over to the next sphere. And all I'm doing is driving a ah, quarter, quarter of an inch, a half an inch or something above the top of the sphere. And now this is a procedural thing. I'm going to reset the program. And I'm going to press cycle start again. And now it's going to say, are you trying to do number one or number two? So if I don't think I got a good scan on number one, I could redo it. Or I can just hit number two. And it's going to run the same kind of routine. Is there a max distance from the sphere that it should be at the starting point? 20 millimeters. If you don't pick near the center of the sphere, the routine will start farther down in Z than it should. And when it's doing this function here, you, you need to make sure that the ruby, the red ruby is striking the sphere, not the side of the shaft. And if you position too far off center when you start, that could happen. You'll get a bad reading, in which case then you'll get a bad shift. I'm black on my icon over here, so it says I'm done. I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna reset the program. Cycle start. It says, which one do you want to do? I'm just going to go right to number three. Now, when this is finished, the most important step of all is you need to run the program one more time because that gives you the ability to redo number three if you need to or to commit the values that you just probed for everything to commit those to memory. If you don't commit them to memory, you should, you know, might as well not have started in the first place. But if you forget to commit them to memory and you move your part, you could put it back in roughly the same position, continue the routine and get the opportunity to, to try it again. As long as you don't remove the spheres, you're good.
how far do the spheres need to be from any physical object like the part? They so could be on the part. They no, could I be mean, like, and it came in oh, here. It's, uh, it starts about 35 millimeters away. Okay. So you need to have a clearance zone. So now my program's done, and I'm just going to reset the program, and I'm going to run it a fourth time. And the fourth time now, I have a new one that says remember. So if I'm happy with the picks, I say remember, and the program's basically instantly done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel the program, and I'm going to move the part. And just for demo purposes, I'm just going to quick clamp it. You can turn the part in space, you can clamp it to the floor, whatever it is you need to do to move the part. So now this is the most important part. What I do now is I'm going to drive the robot over. And I'm going to run a, a different routine, which I'll call up in a minute here. But I'm going to run it on smear number one. In the same directory, the leapfrog directory where I had my get spheres, I'm going to say known spheres. And I'm going to program them, I'm going to prompt, uh, probe them, I should say, in the same order. What are you on? Sphere number one. Boom. This routine looks and functions kind of the same way. So when I was on the rotary table, my base was at the center of this tabletop. So my base would be like in the middle of the car. So when we're done, we'll drive it over there manually and see if we're at like X, Y, zero, just to kind of get a verification of what we did. When it's finished, the icon's going to turn black. So now that it is, I'm going to drive over to my second sphere. You know, you might want to number these or something with a magic marker or whatever you want to do. I'm going to reset the program. Oops. Oh. Stop. All right, so I realized I didn't have my table affixed to the ground very well, so it rocked and I realized I needed to fix it. So all I'm gonna do is basically start my process over again. And I'm gonna do it by going back to sphere one, because I need all good data, not some good data. And when I reset the program and run it, it says, hey, are you gonna try to redo one or two? I'm just gonna say, no, I'm, I'm gonna redo number one. So once it turns black, I'm ready to go. This time I'm not gonna wobble my fixture in.
reset, run the program again. This time I select Sphere 2. So when I'm done with this, my zero should be approximately the back of the windshield right in the middle. That should be my X and my Y zero. And then my Z is way down here, just because just that's the way I set it up. In power mode. In power mode. Where will a zero be on, in the robot world? When this routine's done, it'll be right here, but at this height. So then I'm gonna take the base that this creates right from the robot, I'm gonna take that base, I'm gonna put the numbers directly in a power mill and use it to output my next piece of code. Reset the program, I'm gonna run it again, spear number three. And when I run it one more time, the last pick is calculate the base. At that point, the robot has now set its own base, so that's perfect. And I can take those numbers and put them right into power mill. And how I do it is I say cancel the program. I say startup, excuse me. In my program, if I'd show you, I'm using base nine. So on the robot, I say startup, tool base management, And I'm going to go to base number nine, and I'm going to take those values, and I'm going to punch them directly into power mill, and I'm going to do the next step of the process. So here we go. Lined it up, base nine. Let's let it rip. Perfect. Perfect every time. <laughs>